What's going on, good people? You're locked into Drums Radio, and it's myself, Bushman, director of We Are Ideal Records. I hope everyone's having a great day. And our special guest today is none other than El Mukaka. Uh, carving himself a niche between mainstream and underground music, uh, dance music, I should say. It is a unusual story, but you'll hear that from him. Born in Lusaka, Zambia, to a Greek mother and a Zambian father, his appreciation and love for the two diverse cultures not only enriched his identity, but also inspired him deeply. But instead of me talking more about him, here's the man himself. What's going on, brother? How hey, are man, you? how you doing? Greetings from Madrid. Man, I'm jealous already. I'm jealous already. <laughs> How have you been today then anyway? I've been good. I just got back from Zambia yesterday, just flew in yesterday. So I've been back for like 24 hours, but uh, but good to be back. You know, I've been I've been in Africa for like six weeks, playing a bunch of shows and then, you know, spending some time with my family during the festive season. Uh, and now I'm ready to, to, to kick some ass, you know, let's get into 2023. No, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. So yeah, just looking through, you have a very sort of very diverse catalog, especially under Afro House. It's more progressive, I should say. I guess I can understand the reason of sort of moving to Madrid, which is quite heavily progressive over there. So I understand that vibe. So just just talk to us more about the inspiration. I see that you've got different cultures like Zambia and Greek. So yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot to take in. So um, Talk to us about that. Talk to us about the inspirations. What what turned you into El Mukaka? Yeah. So you know, I've been doing music for for a while now. You know, my mom, when when she was growing up, always wanted to 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 learn music, to play an instrument. But unfortunately, her parents couldn't afford to get her a teacher. Now, my mom was born on a beautiful island in Greece called Cephalonia, Cephalonia in a small town in the island. So not even in the capital of the island, you know, let alone the capital of the country. So when she had us, my sisters and me, she vowed to make this difference in, in, in her children's upbringing. And so we grew up playing instruments. Uh, I grew up playing the, the piano, um, but my real passion was for, for rap music, for hip hop, and thank God I evolved out of that. But, you know, music has been playing a massive role in my life since I was about 13. Um, but the, the specific path, the vision wasn't so clear. You know, music is such a vast thing um, yeah. with so many different paths that one could take and, and not many unique paths either. You know, to be honest, yeah. right now, and correct me if, if I'm wrong on the exact figures, but at least 100,000 records are being put out on a daily basis. So yeah. what makes a musician's music stand out anymore? Yeah. Anyway, for me, it, it became clear over time that I needed to sort of dig inwards and look at my, yeah. my cultural background, which is this Afro-European culture. Uh, a okay. mix of Greek culture and a mix of Zambian culture. I was born in Zambia, raised in Zambia, but yeah. living with a single Greek mom, you know, so raised okay. in, a, in a European household yeah. in Africa. Okay. And that is what I am, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and my music is a reflection of that. And it took some, some, some time to sort of figure that out. And yeah. then, of course, experimenting with the fusion approaches. There's so many ways to approach fusion music and even this specific fusion. And I spent the last, um, well, the majority of my 20s, I think, experimenting with that. I just turned 30 a few months ago. So um, uh, it's the last few years that where everything is sort of coming together in my mind yeah. um, in terms of what the El Mukuka voice, what the El Mukuka vision is. Um, but to boil it down, it literally is this fusion of Afro-European or rather Afro-Western culture. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I like to play around with a lot of African uh, guitars, especially from the south of Africa. So from yeah. Zambia and the region, Zimbabwe, South Africa. One of my biggest African role models it was the late uh, Oliver Mtukudzi from Zimbabwe. Okay. And I was very fortunate enough to share a stage with him at a festival once. And then I met him a few other times 
uh, towards awesome. the end of his of his life. Now, that's uh, awesome. But he still serves as one of my biggest inspirations when when it comes to identifying the fusion elements that come from Africa. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and many others as well. But it's really that sub-Saharan vibe, which is which is where I'm from. I'm from the south of Africa. Okay. So um yeah, and uh, and and that has been my compass, uh, you know, throughout my 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 career, and it will continue to to be so. And um, I think one of the most exciting things from a musical point of view this year, uh, and not many people know this, so it's still kind of exclusive. But I will be oh, dropping really? my debut album. This oh, okay. Year, just a few months from now, actually. So it's, it's oh, going to be the first that, half of the year. Uh, you heard it live here, people. And, and I'm so excited because that's going to be a manifesto for what yeah. the El Mukuka vision is, you know. I think for some people it hasn't been as clear. Obviously, you can hear the African elements here, but you can hear these two worlds in my music. Yeah. And these two very different worlds. And, and obviously, I've been experimenting with tactics, uh, fusion tactics that allow me to create this harmonious blend. But now it's time to really showcase the the way forward you know and, and the album is really going to be that it's definitely one thing i've noticed though with your productions is is you you pay homage is the right word to say to to your culture both ways and it's literally the same as me coming from uh, my mom being west african and my dad from spain and that himself so it's like i get i i understand completely so it's sort of one of those ones where it's it caught me by surprise because I hear it and I'm like, I can resonate with this. I hear the elements, I hear the sounds. So for me, it's 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 wonderful to hear that you actually take both of them and merge. And it's it's wonderful for the sound because you've you've put yourself into a very specific area now. I for you to get signed and picked up as an artist by Ultra. So congratulations on that. Thank you. So Thank for you. that, how did that sort of come about? Because I I I get what Ultra is about. Yeah. I understand they're trying to expand to add more to their catalogue of, of artists that they do. How did yeah. how did you get that you know, foot in the door for them to give you yeah. the go ahead to become an artist? It was it was divine intervention, honestly. Um, I love that. I, I had been trying to reach out to Ultra for many years. You know, I, I had before Ultra I was signed to Sony Africa. That deal didn't last too long, and then I found myself without a label. Um, and, and I really wanted like a long term relationship with one label. I was kind of tired of these one night stands with record labels where you sign a song here, then you sign a song there. You don't build anything. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah. So, uh, so I, I ended up in London uh, visiting nice. my ex-girlfriend. And at the time, my, my manager uh, set me up with a studio session with Robin M, who is another African uh. artist from the yeah. UK and and Robin and I clicked and he said man let's let's go for for pizza because Robin um uh is is part Italian yeah, and yeah, my ex girlfriend yeah. is Italian so he's like uh, I'm going to bring my wife and uh and you bring your girlfriend and we go for pizza so you know we went for pizza to his, to his favorite place in in London yeah. and it was lovely and I met his wife and his wife was you know what you need to meet with Paul Arnold from from Ultra Records, it's like okay. you need to meet him at Tile Yard Studios before you go back to Africa. Yeah. Now I was leaving in like 24 hours from that from that dinner, and and so she literally sent him an email in the middle of the night, like 10 p.m. He responded and said, "Oh, come over to the studio tomorrow. Uh, let's uh, you know, let's chat." Nice. And at that time, I was I had just finished doing a song with Adekunle Gold, a fellow yeah. West African, and I was pitching that track. And unfortunately, I had had no luck, you know, literally okay. everyone was turning it down for, for right. some crazy reason, you know, and I was like, do you guys even know how big this artist is in Africa, at least yeah. now he's sort of taken over uh, on, a, on a global scale. But back then he was really blowing up in Africa predominantly. And, and so I played it to, to Paul and he really liked it and he liked my vision. And I think we just clicked as, as individuals. Yeah. And then I went back to Zambia and a, a deal memo was sent to me. Um, and then, of course, things got a little stalled because of the mm -hmm. pandemic. This was literally mm -hmm. a few weeks before the world shut right. down. It was end of February 2020. 
okay. and I was so I left London to go back to Zambia to then go to Johannesburg to play my my first ever ultra music festival performance at Ultra South Africa. Beautiful. And uh, and then the world shut down. <laughs> and the deal stalled a little okay. bit, but eventually we did finish it. The, the negotiation, the signing, and the song came out, and and several songs came out, and 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 here we are now. So literally, That's God amazing. God did all of that. And and if wow. there's one thing I I have tried to understand, looking back at my twenties, in everything I do moving forward in my life, I'm gonna leave a certain amount of room for God to step in. You know, I think. I'm not a okay. thing. I, I'm just a human, right? And there's only so much I can do. But I have this misconception that I have full control over my life. I don't control anything at the end of the day, man. Mm-hmm. So, so knowing that consciously and leaving that room for the universe, if that's what people would rather call it, or for God, or for whatever, yeah. that is that is what I'm gonna be doing from now on. I love that, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. I, I respect that highly. And you know what? blessings it, you deserve it the, the way you the way you're talking the work you put in you deserve it now nah, and i'm i'm happy for you man. thank I'm you i'm happy for you so in regards to your sort of like growing up talk to us a bit more about sort of the the, the you know your school the school that you went to a college yeah. called berkeley college of music yeah yeah, yeah. To, and about you know how how that got you because i can see from what it's, it's been told is it's the best for fusing african musical instruments you know and western deep house of pop so for yeah. you i can i can you know it seems like you know what you wanted to do from early just tell us a bit more about that and that you know how that shaped you into the producer you are today because you know yeah teenage years everyone you, you pick up so much i can imagine you yeah. going through that and then going there what 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 was your drive to then know that this was you know my sound you know another example of divine intervention just getting into that school <laughs> it's a prestigious school um it's it's uh it was my dream school when i was applying to music schools i only applied to two Funny okay. enough, I applied to the Berkeley College of Music in Boston. I applied to the Royal Conservatory of Music and Drama in Scotland, I believe. Oh, nice. Um, because I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do just music or music and acting. Because right. I did a lot of acting in school um, and I and I loved it. Um, but, you know, later it became clear that music was, was, was my calling. And, you know, like I said, I, I, I fell in love with music at a young age and I started yeah. taking it very seriously at a young age. But I was self-taught, which means my rate of progress was so slow. Of course. Um, I only started playing proper classical piano at the age of like 15, 14, 15. Okay. Now, when I went to Berkeley, I, I, I had friends that were sent, enrolled in music conservatories from the age of like four. You know, right. groomed to be the next Mozart, and okay. and it was hard to compete with these with these guys. So, yeah, yeah. just the fact that I started taking my piano lessons seriously at, at such a at such a late stage and was able to get into such a prestigious school is something I'll I'll never know. Uh, yeah. It's it's a big question mark, and I'm just grateful. You know, um, unfortunately, uh, when I did go to Boston and, and you know started studying there, I couldn't. Um, I couldn't complete my studies because I, I just couldn't afford to. You know, the okay. school, the school didn't give me any financial aid. I had from outside, and you know, this is a prestigious school, but it's a yeah. freaking expensive school too. It's literally a, a money-making machine, yeah. like a lot of the tertiary education um, uh, systems in, in in the U.S. You know, but in, in, on, a, on a global scale too. You know, when you yeah, think of the, of the, the big you know, Big universities, place. they're just uh, totally exclusive. Yeah. And um, and so, you know, I, I couldn't get the school to, to change their mind and I had to drop out. So I, I, I dropped out halfway through my degree and yeah. I went back to Zambia and I, you know, started building my my house music career, my DJ career while, Definitely. you know, doing the odd job. I was a sales agent for a while and um, like selling Pepsi and, and and some of their other products as we do now as we do. the challenge in Zambia was that we didn't even have a house music scene like an official scene okay so not only did I have to uh, uh, sort of uh, pave my way into a into the music industry there but yeah, I also had yeah. to create a little scene you had to create some other scene. DJs and that of course right. takes time so so over over several years we started to develop a house music scene 
That's and incredible. by 2000 and maybe 2017, I was yeah. able to to comfortably go full time into music and and have you know after having established this this let's say small house music scene with a few other Zambian DJs like Sebastian yeah. Dutch, Creative Natives, and, and and a few other they're all Afro it. house. Yeah. So um and then things in Zambia just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and now we can we can confidently say we do have a scene. It's growing for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't have a, a massive population. Yeah. Uh, our economy is growing as well, but Zambia yeah. has a legitimate house music scene now. Good. Um I love that. And and that's kind of how that's kind of how it happened. But like you said, Berkeley is a very liberal, very open-minded school. You know, in in the US when people think of music school they they tend to think of the two um the, the two poles you've got berkeley on the yeah. one hand and then you've got juilliard on the other hand which yeah, is very conservative yeah. very classical okay. berkeley is very modern yeah. very open-minded okay um very fusion oriented right the right. weirder you are the better you know like <laughs> that is that Love is that. what they they think and and it's a good thing when it comes to music because the future of music is really blurring these boundaries you know i yeah. hate boundaries yeah. and i hate being put in a box yeah. but the music industry is still so much about that you know it's like no you have to be this you have to do this and you can't do anything else because that's how people know you or that's how we want people to know you and that's so stupid you know if you are a true musician you're yeah. constantly crossing these lines constantly yeah. experimenting and fusing and and for me i think that was one of the biggest um lessons i took with me from berkeley yeah. that that notion that habit to um to break the rules you know to 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 fuse things that ordinarily would never be put together no amazing and i love that and I, that, that's just crazy because Divine, divine in, intervention, as you've stated twice, is real because that's just an incredible story. Like for you to go from that to that to then back to Zambia to build your house music scene, to then to be DJing across 13 different countries in the world, to then go full time into music. That I, I, I must, have, I must have admit, I, I've got a lot of respect for that. That is a, a you, lot man, of determination, I and. Uh, yeah it shines through with your music and talking about the dj inside what is your favorite country that you dj in so i mean there's still so many places i i want to dj and yeah. and, and i will dj you know yeah. in, in in over the over the coming years but from the from the places i've been to and sometimes it has nothing to do with the beauty of the place but yeah. it just has to do with the vibe of the crowd that i found there uh i will say um Nairobi as far as Africa is concerned the experience I had in Nairobi was was amazing um oh, nice. the, the crowd there is just next level Kenya has really developed a solid house music scene and in terms of Europe uh I would say Spain um yeah. for sure and uh I mean I, I feel like saying Cyprus too yeah Okay. Uh, but but I haven't really haven't really sort of uh, gotten deep enough into the, the the Cypriot house music scene yet. I've only played one show and it was like a, it was a private gig and a, at like a beachside resort. But, okay. Um, yeah. 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 But yeah, I'd say Spain and Kenya have are currently at the top of my list. Spain has a good vibe. I, when I so my friends go out there we go out there a few times a year because they have like you know loads of places they chill out my like my family are out there and stuff and everything else and so we go out there and just relax but we go to the the more progressive nights yeah and you, you hear the hint of like afro seeking through in some of it and it's just it's the right vibe for me just put it yeah like that. No, I love it's it. such it's an interesting scene and you've yeah. got the Balearic house as well which yes is a yes true, truly spanish sound yeah um, no, i love it from the I Balearic islands and it's just it's an incredible country with an incredible scene uh, although house music is still not the the mainstream here it's like yeah. reggaeton and spanish pop and and perhaps other other styles it really is a wonderful hub for electronic music and afro house is is taking over not only ibiza and yeah. and, and let's say mainland spain but it's it's taking over oh, the it world really when it comes to house music it's the groove man i keep telling people the, the groove afro house gives you yeah unparalleled 
It's just for it's, sure. It's a groove. And, and I think in general, the, the music industry, and now specifically talking to the dance music industry, mm. got a bit tired of the monotonous, same yeah. old, regular, regular kind of house I music agree. sounds that were coming from Europe and, and not mm -hmm. really incorporating any foreign cultures, Nothing. any exotic cultures. And now it's all about being exotic, being different. Mm -hmm being interesting, being true to yourself. You know, yeah. that, I think that's the bigger message. It's not about trying to borrow someone else's culture or trying mm -hmm. to be something you are not just to be cool. It's about being who you are and being unapologetically true to who you are. And, and that's why I believe right now, and, and this applies to both of us, being yeah. mixed race or being biracial and bicultural, being mm -hmm. Afro-European, there's no better time than, than now. It's gonna get even better. I believe, but I agree. there has been no better time in history to have, to have <laughs> to, to be of African descent. You know, I agree. No I fully agree. Now. Fully agree. It's this people. It all. It was always coming. There was snippets yeah. of it maybe five, six years ago, but now it's you, you can't deny it, and it, yeah. it's everywhere. It's in everyone's productions, and everyone loves it because the groove. I keep saying this. It's just yeah. too groovy not to move to. It's, and, and the culture. I bet yeah, I bet yeah, you, you go culture. out and all these girls just want to come and touch your <laughs> afro, man. I'm so jealous. Oh, I, I you know have, what? Maybe I, ten, I ten years ago. <laughs> ten years ago, but now one person grabs that afro now, man. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I know but what you, know, you mean. It's, I know it's the culture. Mean. It's like... Yeah, it's amazing. It's just, you, you can know, be it's yourself. such a global village now. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and people from all walks of life are interacting. And, yeah. and it's a beautiful thing. I always say thing. that. I say that to people who I take there for the first time. Don't worry about what you're going to hear. You're not going to try and find out the names of just sit back, enjoy yourself. And as soon as the rave is done, every single person says the same thing to me. I've never heard house music like that, but that was amazing. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Come yeah. to more. So moving on to that, um, uh, we're going to have to talk about this. We're going to have to talk about this album coming this year because... Yeah. I'm excited because if this is what you're talking about, then it's right up my street. I'm excited. So talk to us more about this album. Um, you know, when when is it coming? You know, has it been finalized, all done, artwork and everything finished? You're just waiting to distribute it. Talk to us. So I, I don't want to I don't want to be too specific, but I still yeah. want to I want to give enough of a tease. Uh, so it's gonna be out in the first half of the year. So essentially a few months from now. Um, I don't want to say exactly when, but we are kind of looking at uh, end of April, May for, for, for the time being. Yeah. Um, it's going to be about a 10 track album, possibly 11 tracks. Uh, some of these songs have already been released as singles. So the build up to the album started, you know, way back. But now the, the, the exact clear road to the album is going to be revealed in the coming weeks um, okay. as everything yeah. sort of comes together. Uh, I'm thinking of doing a, a special album launch party in Zambia, you know, back home where this entire journey, including this album, started. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm thinking of doing something totally out of the box. So I, I don't want to get into it just yet. The details <laughs> will be revealed soon. Um, oh, but man. for everyone in Zambia who, who's watching this, um, and if you're not, get to Zambia for this. It's going to be a special <laughs> show, something that I've um, never done before. Please record it. If I can't get there, it, ha it have to be recorded. I have to have it. It was calm, man. I'm looking forward to it, like, honest to God. And we're now going to move on to, is this the latest single that's just dropped on the 13th of January with yourself, Enzo, Sifridi, and is it Bacabo? Yeah, Bacabo. They're Bacabo. a Zanzibari group. Called Una Sifu? Yeah. Wicked, man. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. And um, so talk to us about that. I was listening to that all last week and i must say thank you man it's a very sort of my type of relaxed at home chilling with my family afro house side yeah. of thing. not my type of club raving this that but I, type of stuff i can enjoy when i'm just chilling and just listening yeah. to it so talk to us about that single how did that single come about and will that single be part of your album yeah so yes that single will be part of the album essentially awesome. everything i'm releasing now is album, is part of the album um, no, we're literally on no, that on that road to to the to my w album uh, launch um so i met enzo in madrid 
Uh, I moved to yes. Madrid a year ago, exactly one year ago, I, I came to Madrid. And, and the, the purpose for that move was to expand my career um, within the European market, you know. So okay, I've yeah, been based in Zambia for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, being based in a country like Zambia kind of keeps you operating on the outskirts of the house music scene, the global okay. house music okay. scene, yeah. which yeah. which didn't sit well with me. And, and so I... I, I I solidified myself, my brand back home, but now yeah. with my new management team, yeah, my yeah. label, we are now my new booking uh, team as well. We are ready to to expand um, awesome. and take on bigger challenges, and and so that that was the reason for for moving to, to Spain. Yeah. So I met Enzo in Madrid. He had a show, and I discovered him during the pandemic. Oh, um, okay. But I didn't really know much about the person behind yeah. Enzo Cifredi, other than he owns. Wired Records, which is one yeah. of the, the leading record labels, uh, Heavy. Afro House record labels globally, and Heavy. definitely one of the ones uh, I look up to, the as biggest well. or the second biggest in Europe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so he came to Madrid, and I, t I think I DM'd him. I'm like, bro, I'm in Madrid. Let's let's have a coffee. Let's, let's have, a, have a coffee. coffee. Yeah. So I the plan it. was to have like a you know a 30, 40, 50 minute coffee. It turned into a, like an 18 hour adventure together. <laughs> coffee led to lunch led yeah. to drinks and then we kind of split uh so you know we could uh freshen up for the gig and then yeah. i went to his gig and, and we just like ah. spent the entire day together and and really bonded no, and we... after that i i i told him i would love to remix one of his songs far away uh oh, which yeah. is the song that that led me to discover him during the pandemic i think it yeah. was released sometime in 2020 or early 2021 okay and and then after that remix was out we started talking about a, a full-on collaboration and he said yeah. man i have these vocals um that that i wrote and recorded in zanzibar so he was he was trapped in zanzibar during the pandemic not a bad place to be stuck man, in. Um, i can imagine <laughs> <laughs> and bakabo uh, are, are are from Zanzibar. They're they're a group, uh, okay, musical group uh, based in in Zanzibar and from Zanzibar. And so he sent me these vocals, and um, I started working on the track, and and he had some ideas as well. Yeah. But um, I wanted to I wanted to remove some of the old ideas and bring in some new stuff. And and this Latin yeah. piano was yeah. kind of one of the initial. Uh, thoughts that popped into my head when I hit play on that, you know, demo that he sent me. And so I worked on it um, and uh, and invited my manager as well, who who has a musical relationship with me in addition to our manager artist relationship. Of course. And, yeah. uh, and we were bouncing ideas back and forth and then sent it every sent everything back to Enzo and he he sort of added some some final touches and the song became what it what it has become and and we we dropped it exactly seven days ago and it's already at number 16 in the beatport top 100 afro house charts which is which yeah. is a big deal you know i've, I've never yeah. had such a fast climb before no, so great. i'm so grateful to, to all the djs that are buying it that are playing it and, and to everyone that's supporting the record and i have a good feeling that this is just uh, the beginning oh man it's it's a testament to to work with somebody in our type of scene of a figurehead like that for them to give you their time and everything else it's a massive testament to what you've done to get there and again all i can say is go and get the single guys it's, you know it's out on spotify right now listen to that and go and check the rest of uh el makuka el makuka mm. makuka <laughs> makuka el makuka so sorry El Makuka's catalogue because it is a top-notch catalogue especially if you're into your sort of fusion of music and afro tech and afro house it's a it's a great catalogue and I must admit um I'm so happy to have this conversation with you honest to god it's been a pleasure speaking to you about everything it's been a pleasure talking about likewise, you likewise pleasure talking about your your new album which you know you've heard it here first on this one where yeah. it's coming and go and get that single um yeah fantastic amazing and we wish you all the best thank you the drums 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 radio